Nah, guys, we got sense for days. So, let's get into it. Get one, guys. It's number two, guys. I knew I heard a fish. Called bacon bun. <laughs> Smells just like bacon. Smells just like bacon. Now nah, we need a pig now, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna hit this dock for a second, guys. Usually docks whole fish. Got one. Alright guys, got a nice one. Not too bad. Got them on a shaky head. And that custom worm that the rock gave me in that bluegill colorway. One of the bad fish. This is a small one. I'm trying to get that four to five pounder. Getting some numbers today, guys. This is number three on that shaky head. Shaky head is no joke, guys. It'll catch them year round. Got one, man. Ah, that's a good one. On the jig. Yeah, buddy. Hey, man, it's on your area 19. <laughs> Pretty good one, guys. Think about a two and a half pounder. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get into it. Let's break down why you should potentially use scents on your bait. It's a super old question. Some people think it's beneficial. Some people think it's don't. But I really think it is some benefits to using scents. The biggest one probably is its ability to mask like the human odor. And also things like lotion, putting lotion on your hands, uh, maybe touching bug spray, or either like gas. All these things affect fish biting your bait. So I think scent is key, especially as a masking agent. The first one I want to talk about is going to be the garlic smell. Garlic is one of the best ones as far as masking and it doesn't smell too bad, which is a plus. This is one of the ones that I use all the time, as you can see, probably one of my favorite and the one I have the most confidence in. The next one is gonna be anise. This is a old school scent. I haven't used it much, but it is pungent. Like it smells. Like if you smell this dude, you know when you're using it. It's pretty strong. Uh, this is going to be one I'm going to be using in places that has a lot of grass. Uh, it's a really strong smell, and I think fish will be able to smell it. So those are key for covering up uh, smells. Next thing I want to talk about is the shad one. This is one I'm going to be using for hoods and bigger baits. Uh, also, you can use it on your swim baits as hard baits. So this is one I'm excited about using, and it will be getting a lot of use in the next coming weeks and months. So can't wait to use this guy. It will be put to use. And lastly, guys, uh, I want to talk about one of the other important things about using scents. And that's actually fish holding on to your bait. I feel like it's key when it comes to this. I feel like fish do hold on longer. Especially for an angler who's not all the way confident on setting that hook. Um, it's easy to get excited, guys. But with a scent, a lot of times you can chill, be patient. Have confidence that, that fish is going to bite and hold on. Those are the key things, and those are the reasons why I think you should use scents. Uh, Area 19 does make really cool scents. Uh, one of the biggest things for me also, too, is they're in this little small casing. It doesn't get everywhere. It's easy just to throw in your bag or your tackle box and not worrying about it going anywhere, even in those days with hot temperatures. So this is one of the main reasons why I use the Area 19 scents. So you guys should check them out. But let's get over to the tank, and I want to show you guys how the soft plastics work 
in the fishing tank. So we'll see you in a second. All right, guys, let's get into how these baits can be fished in the water and show you some different angles on how they actually look because I think it's really important to know how to fish these baits in the water and see how they actually move. It gives you a different perspective on how they can be fished. All right, so first off, guys, we'll start off with a ribbon tail worm. So this one's icy weightless. Let's drop it in there. So that one just floats down. And one thing without that weight bit on it, it's a lot more weightless. You can fish it in some tight cover areas and get it in some, some places where that weight will actually get stuck. But this one has a ton of action. That ribbon tail just moves throughout the water. And this is a bigger profile worm too, which can help target those bigger bass. So one big thing about fishing plastic worms is you actually want to let that bait fall and hit the bottom first. Because many times bass will hit that bait as it falls down. So that's the ribbon tail worm, guys. I do want to give a shout out to Captain Rick who actually showed me how to use these soft plastic worms. So that's the first one. Really solid bait with a lot of good action. All right. The next one I want to go with is actually the Texas rig worm. This is old favorite for me. This is where most of my bass have came from. Now this one has the bullet worm weight on the end of it. And it sits down and you can drag it along the bottom. You can hop it. There's many ways to fish this. One of the best ways to start fishing to me. And you can catch them year round on the Texas Big Worm. One thing I want to say about the Area 19 worms is that most of all of them float. And they have a really soft feel to them compared to most soft plastics. So that's the Texas Big Worm. One that I recommend all of you guys fish. This is one of my favorite colorways. It reminds me of that big red worms you use to fish your panfish with. Alright guys, next we're going to go to Old Faithful, the Shaky Head. This is one you can't go wrong with. It just sits up vertically. It has more of a vertical approach. Something that's going to stand out a little bit more than the Texas rig sometimes. And it just sticks up in the air. But one of the cool things about the Shaky Head is you can fish it more than just shaking it. One of the best ways I see is to drag it. After a uh, post frontal cold front that comes through, Guys, just drag it along. A lot of times it'll get bit when nothing else gets bit. Uh, Cause that tail just stands up. It's a smaller approach for those bass when they're not moving quite as much. So that's the shaky head. I actually did this color a whole lot. Here's one more color to show you guys too in that shaky head. This is the green pumpkin. So this is a color guys you can fish really well in uh, stained water. It's pretty much good for anywhere. This one is just a little bit bigger than the one I showed you previously. And that's the shaky head. Like I said, you can, you can hop it to imitate a crawfish, or you can just shake it up and down. So I just recommend you guys go out and experiment with it. All right, now let's get to this one. If you guys know me, you know this is one of my favorite ways to fish, and it's with a jig. So. This is actually the alpha feeding crawl on here. It is a crazy bait, guys. It actually has the crawl and it has a minnow coming out of it. So I'm gonna swing it around so you guys can see this jig also. One of the cool things I like about this jig is that the skirts just flares out. And then you actually have this big profile of this crawfish eating a minnow. So this is one of my favorite baits by far from uh, every 19 baits. And that's the alpha crawl. So. Definitely a good one to check out. But with that jig, man, it is a big fish magnet. It's dragging along in those colder months. It may be a slow bite, but when you get them with a jig this size, it should be a good fish. All right, guys, so that wraps up everything for me. Hopefully this helped you out on uh, some solid plastics and gave you ideas on how to actually look in the water. So guys, do me a favor, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.